two, one. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Delusions of Grandeur. I am one of your hosts, but uh, today we are going to go on about a film that is very near and dear to Boris's heart. So why oh, don't indeed. you <laughs> why don't you tell us what film that we are going to go on about today? We are going to be talking about a movie from one of my favorite horror franchises of all time. And one that actually indirectly led me to you guys. Because if I had never gotten into that franchise, uh, I, I would have never ended up meeting you all. But okay, I may get more, more into that later. So the movie we are talking about is Ringu by Hideo Nakata, the Japanese horror movie that uh, uh, the famous American horror movie The Ring was based on. But yeah, we are starting with the Japanese original. Well, actually not the first Japanese Ring movie that was made, but the most famous one. Uh, so, let's see, uh, shall we first check what IMDb says about the movie? Sure. Uh, so, <coughs> okay, first of all, apologies to everyone, I'm a little bit sick, so I'm sorry if I end up coughing and stuff during this discussion. I thought I might not be able to attend, but uh, I wouldn't miss this one for anything. So <laughs> <laughs> let's see what IMDb says. So Ringu is a 1998 movie uh, directed by uh, Hideo Nakata, and uh, it stars. Uh, uh, where where is it? Uh, it stars uh, Nanako Matsushima, uh, Hiroyuki Sanada, uh, Miki Nakatani. Uh, Miki yeah, Nakatani, yeah. Uh, Yuko okay. Takeuchi, Hitomi Sato. Uh, okay, so let's see what it says about the plot. Uh, uh, Reiko Asakawa is researching into a cursed video, interviewing teenagers about it. When her niece Tomoko dies of sudden heart failure with an unnaturally horrified expression on her face, Reiko investigates. She finds out that some of Tomoko's friends who had been on a holiday with Tomoko the week before had died on exactly the same night at the exact same time in the exact same way. Reiko goes to the cabin where the, te where the teens had stayed and finds an unlabeled videotape. Reiko watched the tape to discover to her horror it is in fact the cursed videotape. Uh, Ex-husband Ryuji helps Reiko solve the mystery. Ray collects him a copy for further investigation. Things become more tense when their son Yoichi watches the tape saying Tomoko had told him to. Their discovery takes them to a volcanic island where they discover that the video has a connection to a psychic who died 30 years ago and her child Sadako. Oh wow, the synopsis on IMDb tells quite a lot. Yeah, they, yes, they, actually, they actually nailed it pretty well. <laughs> well, the, yeah. that's on the syn uh, synopsis. Uh, what does the <laughs> what does the main uh, couple of words uh, say on IMDb? Oh, oh yeah, it says a reporter and her ex husband investigate a cursed videotape that is rumored to kill the viewer seven days after watching it. Yeah, maybe I could have just <laughs> read that. 
<laughs> well, yeah. I also want to say that uh, it is also based on a 1991 novel uh, by Koji Suzuki. Um, oh, yeah. Which was at least seven years before this uh, particular film. Um, yes, the, the took place. The novel was written in uh, 1991, the year I was born, actually, funnily enough. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, that novel was the first movie adaptation of that novel was the 1995 TV movie, which was also titled Ringu or Ring in English at first. But then when Nakata's Ringu came out, uh, the TV movie was renamed Ringu Kanzenban, which Kanzenban means the complete edition or something like that. I have this DVD copy of Kanzenban, which it's not an official copy, but as far as I managed to find out, the movie was officially released only on VHS and only in Japan without English subtitles, so I didn't end up buying that. Uh, I have this DVD copy, which is not official, but it has English subtitles at least. Uh, and yeah, that movie is uh, much uh, closer to the plot of the novel than uh, Nakata Sringu. But okay, we may get into that later. So, Dave, what did you bring? Oh, you're, uh, is it a DVD set or a Blu-ray set? Well, this is a Blu-ray set. Um, this isn't the only set that I have because um, I didn't unearth that other set. But uh, but in America, it came out on a uh, Ringu Anthology set with... Um, Four films, uh, I believe it's. I believe it's the trilogy oh. and and the prequel, and then uh, oh. Arrow decided to re-release it on a Blu-ray set with all kinds of extra extras and shit. So, uh, uh, wait, this it, is it, that set? Does it really have uh, four this four uh, cases inside? What are the titles? Could you read no, the titles, uh, please? The titles on here are Ringu, Ringu 2, Ring O, and of course the Lost Original sequel, Spiral, uh, is on here as uh, well. Makes sense. Well, very cool. Unfortunately, I don't own that set. Uh, but I do have a few interesting things I would like to show, if you don't mind. Uh, nope. I uh, I used to be a huge fan of this franchise, a huge nerd for it. Well, I still like it. I'm just a little more into some other stuff now. But yeah, I was a passionate collector of the ring stuff for two years or so. So I have this movie, Ringu, on this DVD that I have shown. I also have it infamously on VHS. Uh, <laughs> I also have a very rare Croatian edition of it, uh, which, uh, it, I, as far as I managed to find out, this, uh, this edition was never... Uh, officially released for sale, it existed only in video rental stores. And I managed to buy this one from a local rental store when they were about to close. Nice. Uh, thank you. <coughs> yeah, I also have uh, more or less the whole collection of other ring movies here, but okay, maybe I shouldn't uh, take too much time with that now, unless you guys want to see. 
Or would you like to go into our first impressions? Uh, Let's go into our first impressions. Um, if we do any other ring discussions, you can bring those along for the ride. Oh, I, I'd love it. And yeah, as I've already shown, I have the novel that you mentioned. And uh, I also have two uh, manga volumes based on that novel. Well, this manga is uh, pretty much directly based on the novel. It's all in Japanese. I wasn't able to read it, unfortunately. But I can still know the plot since I read the novel. And here is a manga in English, which is kind of a mixture of the novel and of uh, Hideo Nakata's Ringu, which we are about to discuss now. But, okay, I guess I'll stop uh, with my collection now, and yeah, <laughs> we can go into our first impressions. Uh, so, is this the first time you guys watched this movie and... Uh, what were your first impressions? Uh, why don't you go uh, uh, first, Crow? Uh, was this the first time watched for you? Yep. And what did you think about it? Um, it was okay. I mean, I, I I read it. I read it. I read the words quickly. Um, so it wasn't too much of an issue reading the movie. Um, I still prefer not to read the movie, but um. Yeah, it, it it was it was it was a decent movie. I I think I prefer the American version more, but um, you know, it it did ha it did have some interesting um, plots to it, and it it really got it got better towards the end. Um, it it was I don't know, it was kind of slow to me, mm. um, and you know, you, you once you finally see the girl and and. You know, you know the backstory and stuff. I think the the backstory and stuff is probably better than the American. Um, it's been a little while since I saw the American version, but yeah. Well, I think I think this backstory is a little bit better. But the movie overall, the American is better in in my opinion. Um, so that's basically my first impression. Okay. Uh, what about you, Tammy? Uh, was this a first time watch for you? No, I think we watched it a while back. Um, I don't don't really remember the difference between this one and the American one. I have to agree with Crow though that it does seem to run a little slow. Maybe just because I don't I don't really like to read movies either. I like to watch them, not read them. But, I mean, it did have a really good plot. It was it was interesting, you know, and. You know, I did get interested in the whole background and everything about all of this, so I did. I did find it interesting, yes. But I, and I don't really remember the differences between the American and this one because I haven't seen that one in a long time either. So, ooh, there are quite many differences, actually. <laughs> and I agree. This is, oh. And this is definitely not. Um, a first time watch for me. Uh, this is at least a third or fourth time watch for me. I do like this one. I, I, I would have to say I would like this one just as equally as I like uh, the uh, ring uh, that the Americans had to uh, 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 do because this movie was so popular in Japan. Um, they're like, hey, we could do that, you know. Except we could do it better, <laughs> you know. So, <laughs> and that's the uh, that's the th uh, th thing. Sometimes they do things better, and sometimes they don't. And they did. So, uh, uh, feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. Oh, <laughs> well, it it was a, a, a one of the most popular fi uh, films that was Americanized by the J horror uh, 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 um, uh, culture. So, and that's what, that's, that's what this movie actually ended up creating. It created a whole line of uh, Japanese horror f uh, f uh, films in, uh, in Japan. Uh, and basically the, uh, the Americans were scrambling, uh, going like, what the fuck? We got to do this shit. 
We got to make it better, you know? So I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, I I love the camera stuff that they do uh, do with the psychics uh, uh, st uh, stuff in this uh, film, and for some re reason the Japanese uh, seem to do uh, it, uh, th that uh, uh, that whole face thing that they do in Death a little bit better, you know. For some re uh, reason, it just looks more freakier to me. Well, well I think what not to interrupt you, but I just, well, since you mentioned that. What I thought was freaky was the pictures. The, yeah. the pictures that they took of oh. the people before they died. How their 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 whole faces are so completely distorted and stuff. It was, yeah. Uh, interesting. It was like a foreshadow well, that they know they were gonna die. I uh, I uh, did find maybe those uh, pictures a little freaky, but I think they were more freaky in the American version because here it was just a uh, uh, face of extreme shock and in the American version their uh, skin got all deformed and stuff. It was uh, much uh, scarier if you ask me, but okay. Uh, people have different opinions about that uh, now uh, for me this is the it's first definitely... time watch for for me <laughs> yeah right well <laughs> the, the first time in a while but definitely <laughs> not the first time ever in 2012 and 2013 i watched this movie quite many times the first time I watched it was in 2012. Uh, before I watched this one, I watched the American one. Ten years ago. I uh, yeah. And I actually ended up reading the novel before watching the movie because I think I was still waiting for the DVD to arrive. So I was reading the novel in the meantime. I can't wait. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's what I well, did. Uh, uh, that's what I did for Lord of the Rings. I saw the first movie, and I went out and bought the books, and <laughs> I couldn't wait for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, funnily enough, uh, I had an anecdote online at some point uh, when uh, the ring. I'm not sure if it was the American or the Japanese version, but. Uh, it was in theaters, and someone saw someone saw an advert for it, and it said the ring, and they thought it would be a Lord of the Rings movie, and they went to watch it, and <laughs> they were in for quite a surprise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, not exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, of course it's about. The uh, one of the rings of power, of course, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, it's my so first impression, <laughs> yeah. So, my first impressions of this movie were definitely good, although uh, it was it was a bit predictable for me, at least the main plot points since I saw the, the American version before and uh, I read the novel. Okay, this movie definitely brings uh, a lot of new things that weren't seen in any previous version uh, or in any other version. So yeah, I couldn't quite see everything coming, but yeah, the main things are the same between the Japanese and the original, like uh, four people dying at the same time at different locations from an unknown cause. Uh, the cursed videotape with weird imagery, these two main characters analyzing it, uh, finding the body, uh, and then <laughs> thinking they lifted the curse, but then it turns out, uh, okay, spoiler alert, but chances are most people uh, will already know these things I'm saying now. <laughs> <coughs> but yeah, these, uh, these main uh, plot points were the same between the American and the Japanese version, but it was still interesting because of a 
different backstory and a different way some things were done so yeah i definitely enjoyed this movie and uh, it's especially interesting because most of the uh, ring stories uh, leave some things unexplained and uh, if you watch more of them and uh, if you watch more versions and sequels and prequels and read the books and so on many things become easy easier to understand so uh, that was one thing all these uh, puzzles uh, I had to solve while going through the franchise. That was a big part of the fun. <laughs> I imagine so, because uh, each each film is kind of like a, a segment of the of the story, and and a, a little bit more is revealed as uh, as we go on. But uh, but uh, um. I know for me, uh, this uh, f film, I just re remember, uh, I remember in the American, ver uh, ver I, I guess I remember the American version more than I do this one, but uh, but I remember mm. the, you're going to die in seven days, you know, okay. and <laughs> I just remember that all throughout uh, out the, uh, the movie. It's kind of, uh, kind of like, uh, uh, that moment in scary movie uh, uh, movie where, where ghost uh, or a uh, ghost face uh, face uh, basically uh, 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 every uh, time he gets on the phone he's like what's your favorite scary movie you know uh, yeah <laughs> I think that I think that was done in scream as well uh, but yeah speaking of scary movie I have these two versions of Scary Movie 3, which is actually, uh, well, it uh, spoofs multiple movies, but uh, it is especially spoofs The Ring. A lot of the plot was based on The Ring, so I count it as a part of my Ring collection. <laughs> <coughs> mm. But yeah. They they left it open for uh, uh, for uh, uh, them to almost like Saturday Night Live it uh, with Scary Movie three. <laughs> <laughs> but um, go ahead ahead and uh, uh, tell us uh, uh, the uh, the beginning of this uh, 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 film. Why don't you? Oh yeah. So at the beginning, we see uh, these two high school girls, uh, Tomoko and her friend Wasami. Uh, an interesting fact, there is no Wasami in the novel and in Kansan, but they created her, I think, only for, uh, well, for this movie. And then she appeared in the sequels and the remake, uh, another version of her, but yeah. So these two girls uh, discuss an urban legend about a videotape that curses its viewers to die in seven days after a foreboding phone call. Uh, now an interesting thing about this scene is that they say some, uh, some things about the content of the videotape, which uh, we don't actually see all of it when uh, Reiko watches the tape later. For example, they say that the woman on the screen says uh, you will die in seven days or something like that, which doesn't really happen. So it's, uh, uh, it's a case of the story getting altered uh, as it goes from out to out. Uh, people uh, add things it's, to it. And... It's, it's like the game of telephone. I, yeah, yeah, uh, I lacked the English word for that, uh, exactly. Because uh, if you whisper in someone's ear and and have them whisper to seven more people, it turns out uh, uh, something totally different in the end. Hey, <laughs> cool. uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. We have that game in Croatia, too. Here it's called Broken Phone. I didn't know the English term for it, so 
I uh, I didn't want to say it without knowing the exact term. <laughs> uh, Did you ever play but, that game, Tammy? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> So, uh, Tomoko uh, then confesses that last week she and her friends watched a strange videotape and uh, received and an first, inexplicable... At, and at first she psychs her out uh, 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 that uh, 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 that she did uh, that she didn't watch the fi uh, film. She joked around with her. Yeah, uh, they, were, they were tickling each other. Oh, she was tickling her and tough her and then she's like, and the phone rang and She's like, it really did happen, didn't it? And she's like, yes. And they're like freaking out, and then they finally answer the phone after a hundred rings or so. <laughs> <laughs> Why yeah. do they have more than one telephone? Uh, I'm sorry, what did you girls? say? Because <laughs> there's teenage girls, you're going to have more than one well, teenage girl. <laughs> No, there was two phones on the wall, you know, when she picked up that phone. I just thought it was kind of weird. Two different lines, maybe. <laughs> uh, so, oh, oh, here you are. Uh, yeah, so like Masami gets scared for a moment, so Tomoko ends up saying that she that she made it up, that she didn't actually watch it, although the truth is that she did, as we find out soon. Uh, uh, but yeah, then the phone rings and they both freak out, but uh, it turns out to be just Tomoko's mother saying they will be late. Uh, like they want to come home as soon as they were supposed to, which uh, kind of saved their sanity in the end. Uh, Probably. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, so Masami goes to the toilet and Tomoko witnesses the TV turned on by itself and she is later killed by an unseen presence, which we of course have no idea what could have happened to her, right? <laughs> yeah, no idea. Quite, quite possibly she might, uh, might have met Sadaku. Oh yeah. <laughs> So, what did you guys think about this beginning? Um, well, I wish I'd actually. I mean, it was it was decent up until where she died. Like, I would have liked to have seen something, you know, of, of the attacker instead of making it you know, ambiguous, you know, like that. Um, I prefer the visual when I'm watching a movie. Um. I leave to the. I, I like to have the imagination for when I watch when I read a book. Um, a lot of old movies used to do this, and and, and TV shows and stuff, uh, like Dark Shadows and stuff. And uh, I I just prefer to see it than to than to hint at what happened. Uh, yeah, actually, it's interesting to notice that. Uh... Tomoko didn't actually die at that very moment when, uh, when uh, the screen color changed and we went to the next scene. Uh, she was uh, actually still alive at that point. Uh, her mother and she found her dad in, uh, in a closet and she wasn't in a closet in the beginning. So... Uh, she was probably still alive for a minute or so, as uh, as we saw at the end. When you see Sadako, you you are probably still alive for a few more seconds. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, kind of like, 
I'm kind of like Kroll in in the respect that, uh, that I do like to see exactly what what kind of entity is is there uh, uh, because I would I wish that you would at least seen a face or or something that well, uh, you that never really see her face, um, but yeah, at least the hair or something. I mean, something to to let you know so what was a proxy what was there, you know. Well. In a way, I can see why you would say that, but the fact that we don't see anything at the beginning is what uh, makes uh, this story a mystery to solve. Like, if you saw it at the beginning, uh, how would it be fun to... Uh, to uh, follow these main characters investigating it and... Uh, uh, finding out everything step by step and uh, uh, seeing by seeing at the very end what actually happens to someone. Even who... if you see something really quickly, uh, uh, like of Sadako just standing there with her hair, and and uh, all of a sudden it just uh, 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 turn its head and uh, or something, just even a, a moment. Yeah, it's 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 still a mystery because you don't know what this person or this thing is or how it got there or anything. So I mean, it's still it's still a mystery. It, it doesn't really reveal anything. It doesn't stop the mystery from happening. It just uh, lets us see a little bit into it. Well, yeah, good point. Maybe, yeah, maybe they did <laughs> that part better in the American version where you actually, when the girl opens the door, you see you see a TV screen with the well on it, and then you see the girl's face get all distorted, and uh, uh, that's the end of the first scene. So, yeah, you don't see Samara there either, but yeah, at least you do see something. <laughs> well, yeah, that's kind of what I didn't like about the movie Cloverfield, is you didn't see anything, you know? I I agree, it'd be nice to at least see just a little glimpse of something, or see some, something, you know? You don't have to show mm. me the whole thing, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, after that, uh, we get to know the main character of this movie, which is Reiko Asaka, uh, uh, Tomoko San, who is now investigating the deaths of Tomoko and her three friends who died at the same time. Uh, an interesting thing to mention is that uh, in this movie, the protagonist is a female character, Reiko Asakawa, and she has this son named Yoichi, and uh, uh, this guy who we are going to mention soon is her ex-husband. Well, it's not quite like that in the novel and in Ringu Kanzen, but where the main character is actually a male journalist named Kazuyuki Asakawa. And uh, instead of a son, we have uh, his wife, uh, Shizuka, or uh, Shizu in some translations of the novel. That's, that's how she's translated in this one, I think. And uh, they have a baby girl named Yoko, while the man who helps uh, Kazuyuki Asakawa do the investigation is just a friend, not uh, a former romantic partner. <laughs> uh, okay. So, so, <coughs> so, yeah, let's see. Reiko Asakawa investigates this legend and learns uh, during Tomoko's funeral that... Uh, the three friends who watched the tape with Tomoko died at the same time as hers. Uh, uh, so she basically yeah. goes to, uh, to the different schools and uh, talks to the students about uh, about what they know about the different situations, uh, and she finds out that uh, that there is a 
a couple who has uh, has died uh, like three days before. Um, evidently, they uh, they were uh, snogging. That's what they called it, snogging. Uh, snogging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, they couldn't say kissing as they snogging. <laughs> evidently, the corpses look uh, looked like nothing else they'd ever seen before, and uh, so she uh, uh, she found out what school um, was involved in that, and she went to that school and she f uh, found out, you know, a, a, a little bit more. And when she went to uh, uh, when she ended up going to uh, what is it, Thomas, uh, uh, Tomaso's uh, f funeral? To Tomoko. Tomoko's. Yeah, funeral uh, Tomoko's. Tomoko's funeral. She ended up finding a photo of uh, the uh, the four at the cabin in which they watched the the video. So she found out that it was on the Isle of what? This Pacific Clad Resort. I thought it was I on the island of Izu. Yep. Uh, yeah, I I think it is an island. Island Wait, is a... The island is la later when they go to where. Uh, yeah, but this where cabin Sanoko is. Grew up. The, the cabin, this cabin is, is in Izu. Zizu, yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, she ends up visiting it, uh, and yeah, there we do get a little bit of a slow scene where before she actually watches the page, she browses through some uh, notebook where the previous people who were there doodled some stuff. Uh, irrelevant to the plot that we see her take a nap and so on yeah that part was a bit slow i have to agree with crawl there and uh, i guess she ends up going to whoever manages uh, the grounds and fight and while he's like searching for the day that these people were or on she notices that there's a blank vhs sitting on the sh uh, shelf and she points it out to him and he's like, oh, um, I guess this just kind of showed up. I didn't even realize it was there. Uh, and uh, I guess she hands it to, uh, 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 he hands it to her. And she immediately takes it back to the room and then she watches it. And Depends. she gets a, um, what, what? Oh. I said dumbass. What the <laughs> 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 yeah. You want to catch me watching this well, thing? <laughs> let's be honest. If, if I gave you some random video and said, if you watch this, you will die in seven days, would you really not watch it? <laughs> no, I wouldn't watch it. <laughs> well, it, wasn't, it wasn't just you telling me. She has, she had seen that a bunch of people had watched it and died oh. all at the same time. That's enough of a coincidence for me to say, okay, I'm, I'm not watching it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, okay, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she probably thought they couldn't have really died from that. There had to be something else and so on and so on. Like, Guess what? You're wrong! <laughs> Tammy, what did you think about uh, the way in which this uh, uh, this reporter was investigating this uh, 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 this series of events? Uh, do you think that she should have watched the tape? Because she's a reporter, she probably felt obligated to watch it. You know, I personally agree with Cole. No, I wouldn't have watched it. You know, <laughs> but I'm not a reporter. A reporter, you know, she's doing an investigation and the tape has to do with it. She probably felt that she had to watch this to find out more. And then she was nice enough to invite her ex-husband over to watch it. <laughs> yeah, because she just loves him so much. She just loves him so much. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, I'm not sure if she originally intended for him to watch it, but... Uh, well, she certainly uh, didn't she, take the fight uh, when, he wanted, when he put it in. Uh, she <laughs> certainly didn't intend for Yoichi to watch it. No. Oh, <laughs> definitely not. Oh, yeah. She freaked out when she found out he watched it. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, should we maybe say a few things about the actual content of the tape? Sure, uh, but spoiler alert, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you hear it's us, a uh, <laughs> yeah, if you hear us describing the content of the tape. Uh, I hope you don't receive a phone call right afterwards. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so yeah, the first shot is a uh, is a view from the well where we see it's actually what uh, Sadako saw from the well when she was uh, thrown inside, like. Uh, she see the hall of the well, uh, uh, and she sees uh, the person who killed her, who threw her down, uh, uh, looking at her from above. Then, uh, what's the next image? Damn, I can't remember it uh, in the exact order. Um, if I remember correctly, the, uh, there was uh, what looked like um some japanese wording um and it it's it, it, it eventually translated to uh that goblins and brine thing that, uh, that uh, 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 he found yeah. out for yeah for all it can brine goblins be dying which uh, yeah it uh, Apparently, it's some dialect meaning something like if you play in the sea, the goblins will get you. But yeah, okay, I was wrong. The first, uh, the first thing we see on the tape is uh, the static. Then yeah, the shot. Uh, yeah, and then and then uh, the mirror. Oh. Yeah, the woman uh, in the mirror. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, the woman combing her hair. Then uh, the mirror uh, suddenly switches to the right side, and we see what seems to be a little girl in a white dress. With uh, we don't see her face, only long black hair. Uh, then for a moment we see the woman again. Yeah, then we see some uh, Japanese uh, script. Uh, with uh, these uh, kanji characters moving across the screen. Then some uh, people... Damn, this scene is a bit difficult to distinguish. What is this? Is there a, 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 yes. character, a, a character pointing towards something? Uh, yes, that's the next scene. Uh, uh, a male character standing in front of uh, the sea with a towel or something on his head. We don't see his face, and yeah, he is pointing to the left or from his perspective to the right. Yeah, uh, we don't get to know what uh, uh, what uh, that picture really means. Uh, it's kind of up to interpretation, I guess. Actually, we it, do kind of get what uh, what it means later, uh, uh, because she look uh, she remembers that imagery uh, wh uh, when it comes to uh, to the pointing. It point it pointed to her purse where the tape was uh, in, fa in fact, and that's when she realized uh, that what did I do uh, do that was different. Oh, I copied it, you know. So, Were uh, we skipped to the end already? No, um, uh, it, it's just that's what that imagery meant. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, but we, we, still we, don't... we we need to roll back. Yeah, you to, skipped uh, all the way to the end. <laughs> I, I, the only reason why I mentioned it is because of the photo. Uh, so going backwards, uh, Go we. Back 
we are at the uh, the moment where, uh, where we are talking about about what is in fact on the video. So uh, 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 so after she sees the video, because uh, 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 she's like, well, what the fuck, you know? Uh, anyone uh, would be <laughs> be like, what, what what the hell are these I images, you know? Uh, yeah, the, there is one of a human eye with the Japanese character Sada written inside the eye. And then we see the well, and uh, that's pretty much the end. Then there goes the static again, and the phone call. <laughs> and immediately when mm. she picks up the phone, uh, she hears like the same noise that she heard on the video and she like immediately slams it down whereas in the remake uh, uh, you actually uh, he hear like th that whisper you're gonna you're gonna die in seven days you know uh, so, i think your phone is ringing <laughs> oh. let's hey, go hey, he, he was born when this film was created uh, so he is now the reincarnation of sadako Oh, well, <laughs> uh, uh, funnily enough, I think I have more in common with uh, Ryuji Takayama, although with some other incarnations of him, maybe not so much the one in this movie. But yeah, I was actually born in the year when the novel was made, not the movie, but... Uh, uh, <coughs> Yeah, that uh, that actually maybe makes me more connected to it since the novel was the very first version of the story ever written. <laughs> so shortly after uh, she uh, sees the videotape, she, I believe, takes it at home, I believe. And uh, yes. I guess... That's when she calls in her ex, and uh, uh, I guess he's already heard uh, heard the tale. In fact, uh, there is one moment that I kind of like here because you get a moment where he passes his son Yoichi, like he, like he's respecting him for a moment. You know, like, he, 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 like they don't, they may not like kn know each other because it doesn't seem like he's been in in their life in a long time. Well, at first I thought he was a creepy, creepy guy the way he, st you know, stared at him for a minute before I found out that he was his father. So I was just like, why was he being so creepy like that? You know, that's that's my thought. You know, because uh, you don't know who well, the hell he is until well until afterwards. The w the way I think about it is, uh, uh, he, we we learn that he's got like some uh, psychic ability. Um, and I think that he was having some kind of vision at that moment, uh, like, uh, while he was like staring at him. So mm. that, uh, that's the way, uh, that's the way I, th I think about it after seeing it. I didn't, times. I didn't think of it as creepy, but maybe that was because I saw the American version first. So I knew exactly who he was, uh, uh but uh, what exactly was it that you found so creepy about him in that scene? Um, like he was like a, you know, a child pedophile or whatever, because just he was just the way he was staring at him, <laughs> you know. Like, you know, we, we just get introduced to this guy, you know, that 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 all of a sudden is standing there, and then and then you find out that he goes and visits visits the mom, which just kind of made it creepier. Until you find out, oh, that's ex has uh, ex husband and actually the kid's father, and obviously he hasn't been in the kid's life because the kid didn't know who he was. So um, yeah, that that's just seemed you know creepy to me, you know. Well, I don't know. I wasn't thinking of it that way at all. Uh, but okay. I wasn't thinking of it a, a bit like that per se, but I can see where you could t uh, take it to that le level of creepiness um, uh, without knowing like who he was before uh, before you know he was revealed. Uh, but um, I guess she invites the ex 
over to check out the tape, and he's all down for it. <clears throat> so he watches it. She goes outside. He says it's done, uh, and she's uh, and they both wait for the phone call, and nothing happens. So, um, uh, he, yeah, the absence of the phone call is actually what difference between this version and the American. In the American version, you always get the phone call after watching the tape. Yeah, uh, the di uh, the difference is, as we find out later, why that phone call didn't happen, uh, w uh, which yeah is an interesting re uh, reveal for this film, because uh, I don't think they have that uh, that type of thing in the in the ring. But I would love to rewatch the ring uh, eventually so that we can compare. <laughs> I I would love that too. But uh, in any case, uh, so he does, and I guess he then t uh, takes it upon himself to begin further um, investigation into this, just on the pretense that something is up with this videotape and that, uh, and that they, in fact, have signed their doom. And he finds out a whole cache of stuff. Uh, stuff. What did he find out? Uh, he saw uh, a stranger approaching him, and he just uh, felt that that was the person who made the tape, uh, which we later find out was Sadako. Uh, so yeah, that's when he starts taking it more seriously and gets a little more nervous. Well, yeah, and ultimately he he finds out that there was this island where there was this volcano. Uh, what what is the name of that island, by the way? Do you do you remember? I think it started with an M. I think it was all. Uh, Oshima. I think if we are talking about the same thing, oh, uh, and that was uh, Mountain Mihara, the volcano they mentioned. Yeah, yeah, the Mountain Mihara, and they found out that it had erupted at one point in time, and it was a huge eruption, and that uh, the uh, this. A woman that was in the mirror, uh, they found out was named Shizuku or something like that. Shizuko Yamamura, yeah. And evidently, she, uh, she was known to pro uh, be kind of a seer, uh, kind uh, know things before they ha uh, happened, and she actually had quite a, a, a bit of news coverage at that time um, because of it. But uh, the local people were afraid of her, you know? And, but I guess she also had yeah. a daughter. Uh, yeah, there is also an interesting fact about that. Uh, that part of the story was actually somewhat based on true events. There was a man named uh, Tomokichi Fukurai who was uh, trying to prove the existence of uh, these things, uh, clairvoyance and uh, photography, as they call it, when someone uh, projects imagery from their mind onto a physical surface or something like that. Uh, a man existed, yeah, who was trying to prove the existence of those things, but he was eventually, they declared him a phony, and uh, I, I don't remember the whole story exactly, but there was a woman, the woman was named Chizuku, the movie, it's Shizuko, so 
the similarity is not coincidental. So yeah, that part was somewhat based on a true story, which is something I found pretty interesting. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of pretty uh, pretty interesting. Um, and one of the other things that they found out is that, uh, that um, there was a professor uh, similar to uh, the guy that you uh, just spoke about that had taken an interest in uh, Shizuko, uh, Shizuko uh, and uh, an interest in her daughter and uh, began experiments on them. For, uh, uh, and we found that out through the visions that the father had uh, when they went to this island and found I believe it's the father of Shizuko that that they find. That uh, is... I think it's her. I think it's her cousin, if I remember correctly. Okay, I knew or they brother, were brother. Not sure. Whichever. All I know is that uh, that it seems like they were uh, uh, him and this other lady were running sort of like a bed and breakfast like deal. Um. Because it, it seemed like the the place that they went to had like many rooms. Yep. Uh, I'm sorry, I had a glitch. It had many what? Many many rooms. Ah, yeah. And one of those rooms actually had that mirror that uh, that uh, uh, that lady had been standing at. Uh, so they stopped and looked at that for a moment. But uh well the funny thing about it is she stopped and opened the door before she knew there was a mirror or anything. It's like something told her to open the door. Ooh, good point. And Reiku well, they were immediately uh, uh, Lee, uh, once seeing this man uh, uh, this man like uh, uh, immediately demanded to ask him about uh, uh, Shizoku or Shizuko. no comment. <laughs> hey, what about her daughter? She didn't have a daughter. Yeah, <laughs> he didn't want to say, uh, say anything. Uh, uh, thing. Uh, what? Yeah, I was. Uh, I. I must say, it was delightful how they uh, pretty much forced him to spill the beans. So. I, uh, have a pet pee with people who uh, wouldn't say what you ask them. <laughs> Tammy, what do you think about this whole backstory with the, this volcano erupting and um, uh, 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 finding out about the, uh, this woman who was a seer and her daughter? Wh uh, what did you think about that aspect of the film? I found it interesting. They would, you know, they're trying to investigate it as to the folk, the folklore. So that's part of the investigation is to go back and find out all these stories and where they come from. Mm. Well, not only that, yeah. they they kind of have a timeline within which they actually have to find this information, and when they finally get to this island. They uh, they realize that they, uh, they are about to get caught in a storm. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, that's uh, that's an interesting part. Like uh, these guys are like, no, you can't go now. It's dangerous, and they're like, you have no idea. We have how long? One or two days left to live. Not sure which day it was. <laughs> It was more dangerous uh, not to go. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, they, they didn't outright. Uh, they didn't outright say that to the guy, but that's what they were thinking, probably. <laughs> Word. Well, and they found the old man sitting by the sea. And that's what, when he just kind of spilled the beans. Well, sort of. He needed that's a little help. 
he needed a little help uh, to spill the beans because at first he wasn't going to say nothing, but uh, but then um, Reku's husband, uh, I forget his name, uh, he actually up, yeah Yuji, he he went up and touched him, and her, that's her when name we, is Reku. Her her name is Reiko. Reiko. No, no. Begins with an A. Uh, I'm sorry. What did you say? It begins with an A. Uh, Asakama. Oh, that's uh, her last name. Yeah, she's she's mostly uh, referred to with her last name. Oh, okay. Why would her ex-husband call her by her last name? That makes no sense. Uh, that's what I kind of wonder too, especially because she calls him by his first name. So yeah, I <coughs> I don't know. That's uh, I know. I think that uh, that uh, that's something that could have been fixed at, at, at one po a point. Like why why would you call someone just by their last name? Uh, unless it's well, uh, unless it's a matter a form of respect for women. I mean. You know, like they do that a lot um, in some things, but I mean, you know, when people are intimate, you know, usually uh, you, you don't do that, you know. Um, uh, generally, I think it's yes. I think it's funny that, like in um, in Superman comics and stuff, like she still calls him Kent, but that's kind of like a pet name um, more than than anything else, you know, just because that's what she always called him. So even after they got together and got married and stuff, she still just called them that, even though she's a Kent too, you know. Um, just, mm. But, you know, for the most part, like a, a married couple or even an ex-married couple wouldn't call each other by their last name. <laughs> uh, yeah, I kind of wonder. I mean, generally in Japan, yeah, it is common to call people by their last names. I think it is... Um, kind of uh, sign of respect uh, in their culture but yeah why would you uh, why would you uh, call your uh, your ex-husband or ex-wife with their last name especially if the other uh, uses the first name yeah that i didn't understand that either well Regardless, this this is when we started to see a few more um, things that uh, were had happened years ago um, through the eyes of Yuji, you know. Um, and I think we also seem to get a, a vision or two through the eyes of Reiko as well. Um, because I think this whole family was like, in, in, in a sense, like psychic, in a sense. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, well, uh, Reiko wasn't, I think, but yeah, Ryuji was, and uh, his son inherited it from him. And yeah, the American but, but version. It, it seemed to me for a moment we were getting a vision fr uh, from Reiko as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. It, 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 did, yes. it did feel like she had one too. Uh, yeah, yes, yes, she did. But uh, uh, I, uh, I don't know. I interpreted it like uh, uh, Ryuji somehow passed it on to her while I think it from. The, I think the reason why she was able to see things now, like, like he is, is because oh. she has. A, a supernatural day that she's going to die. So now, oh. uh, now she's in that world of supernatural, and, and, and you know her death is Ooh. imminent. Uh, now she's like halfway between the living and the dead, in in, in a sense, where Ooh, yeah, she, the... she can now see things. You know, <laughs> uh, that makes sense, actually. Uh... Like in the other versions as well, after you watch the tape, you start seeing all sorts of things uh, until the day you either die or do we will see what. 
<laughs> Definitely. So they ultimately get the old man to take them aboard uh, 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 a, a ship to get them through the ty uh, typhoon uh, because he basically says, well, maybe Sadako uh, will want me, uh, want me to die in this type uh, typhoon and, and then be done with it, you know? Uh, so God, uh, God willing, maybe this will be my punishment, you know? So uh, that's <laughs> that's the way I took it. You know? I, I, I do want to mention the the, the the one scene where where uh, he he's talking and he's saying maybe the three of us should die, and then he was saying that you know that we should never have had a kid in the first place, and she like freaks out and cr starts crying and stuff. And that was that was pretty fucked up for him to say, um, you know. And all and also way before they even get uh, get into the mm. boat, uh, uh, they uh, they, uh, they had them uh, the visions, which ultimately show us sedu uh, sedu uh, Sadaku, uh, when she actually predicted someone was going to die and they died, or actually she willed them to die and they died. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, the, the report the daughter is the started one that to... killed people. Yeah, the daughter uh, is the yes, one that did. Yes. <laughs> We were having some kind of a glitch, I believe, right? <laughs> we couldn't hear you for a moment. Or can you hear him? All right. Well, in any case, <laughs> can anyone else hear me? I hear you. Okay. I hear you. Uh, okay. Then uh, I will just continue for a moment. I think uh, Boris is having some kind of a gl uh, glitch. Um. Okay, I think he's coming back. All right. So we have a moment where we see that Sadako has basically willed someone to die. What did you all think about that particular moment? Mm. <laughs> Uh, well, I, uh, yeah, maybe generally it would have been scary, but uh, at the same time, I could uh, pretty much understand why she did that. Like, if you were a child of her age and you had the power to do something like that, and then there was someone uh, uh, shouting and being an asshole and uh, putting your mother through this stress, uh, wouldn't you do the same thing she did? If I had the power, so, I'm not sure whether I would or uh, it wouldn't, but, uh, but I can understand being in a room, having uh, accusers of your mom and uh, angry uh, to the point where you know they are almost like hurtful a lot of people didn't l uh, like uh being told about these things before they happened and thought it was weird and thought that she was a freak you know yeah also it's possible that uh yeah sadako had her powers but maybe Maybe that was the only power she could actually use on that man to make him stop doing what he was doing. Maybe there was nothing else she could have done to save her mother than that. Yeah, I can see that. But anyways, they, uh, they get on the boat and uh, they get back 
and they realize that they don't ha ha have any more uh, time. Uh, in fact, uh, while they're on the boat, she says to him that she only has one more day. So, oh, yes. They go back to that cabin and they pretty much dig up uh, the place uh, underneath the cabin, uh, which is where they find a well. And somewhere during the movie, they, uh, uh, I believe it's Yuji uh, who figures out that he thinks that um, that professor guy actually um, killed uh, Sadaku for some reason. And uh, I think he found out that it was done at that cabin. And he found out that there was a well underneath that property. And so uh, so that uh, that's where they, uh, they went. And uh, they uncovered the well. And Yuji went down, and they they started to uh, take pails of wa uh, water out of the well. To uh, <laughs> and, and the intent was to find the body and uh, make sure that it found a good resting place. Um. So, what did oh, y'all yeah. think about this whole moment with the well scene? Um. Did you guys feel anything about this uh, uh, this particular scene? Well, wow! <laughs> uh, I uh, I thought maybe the part with the buckets was uh, a little bit too long, uh, but aside from that, uh, yeah, if you were watching this movie without knowing what to expect. Uh, it would have probably been uh, one of the most suspenseful moments of the whole movie. Uh, but yeah, it actually gets really interesting only when Reiko goes down. And, uh, yeah, I agree that it was... I mean, I was thinking when he was down there that, you know, it would make more sense that she was down there because, you know, those buckets of water get pretty heavy and, and you know, he, he's obviously a lot stronger than she is, so... You know, when he brought, had her go go down, uh, you know, made more sense. Uh, yeah, he did. Uh, I actually prefer how they did that in the American version. They skipped the whole thing with the buckets. They just uh, had, uh, if I remember correctly, they had a TV fall on. The, the woman and she was just knocked down the well and started to look for Samara and found her and so on and so on. But yeah, I think it actually worked better without the whole scene with buckets. Yeah, I, I do think the uh, the scene with the buckets went a little bit too uh, too long myself. They yeah. could have. Cut it down a little bit, a, a little bit. Maybe after he got uh, uh, tired, she took over, uh, over, and it could have been like. Uh, but he trimmed. wasn't tired of the other way around, because he wasn't. Well, he, he was just putting. He was just putting uh, water in the buckets. So he, she was actually pulling the buckets all the way up, full of water. Well, so yeah, she, she might she not had, have been. She had the hard work. Well, yeah, and you, you never know how many days she didn't sleep. Uh, because of this oh. whole shit, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> well, but she definitely we... went d d d down and she found uh, uh, and she found the uh, the hair. And, uh, one thing I thought that was kind of cool is that uh, uh, Yuji was kind of describing once he got down there, uh, uh, describing how she was still alive when she, uh, when the professor put it there, so she was actually trying to scratch her way out. You know, I th I found that uh, kind of a, a, a kind of unnerving when I I I read that uh, at least the first time. 
Yeah, Rudy actually finds her uh, fingertips uh, torn off and uh, stuck in the wall of the well. Like she tried to climb out and her her fingertips uh, were torn off her fingers. Uh, so that's what we actually see there. And maybe the reason why Ryuji went down instead of Reiko first was because... Uh, they didn't know what they were going to find down there, so maybe he wanted to be the braver one or something like that. I very much felt like Reiko uh, 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 acted very similarly to uh, uh, another female that, uh, that we know, Shelley Duvall from The Shining. She seemed like she was... Oh very intensely frightened, you know, um, for <laughs> the, uh, uh, for the scene, uh, scene, it's scene, uh, I don't know if you know what I mean. I mean, uh, Shelly Duvall in the shining, she, she was, she was even abused off the set by the, uh, 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 uh directly, uh, director emotionally, uh, just to prepare her for the role. But, uh, but, in order to get a reaction the, uh, the way that uh, that we want, I, I sometimes think that there was a little bit overreacting on her side of things. I think it was overreacting when when the guy said about they should die and the kid. Like I would have expected her to like freak out on it, like scream at him and stuff, not cry like a little babe, like a little girl. You know that that did not seem appropriate you know she seemed like a a woman you know she she's a reporter and 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 you know even knowing what you know she she took the risk and, and watched the video and, and all this other stuff you know it just it seemed like she's a lot tougher than that and she wouldn't have just laid down and then took what he said she would have fucking like screamed at him and what the fuck are you talking about or whatever you know so that seemed completely out of character uh, on, on that point um, mm. as far as other stuff being afraid, well, you know, um, I think she, that, that might've been more correct. Um, but the, the scene where she's, you know, like just crying like a little, little girl, uh, it didn't seem, didn't seem right at all. <laughs> oh, you're talking about after he had, uh, had said, well, maybe we should have never had a child. To begin with, he said it was, the three of us should have, should, have, should just die, and you know, the, yeah, the key, we should never have had a kid, anyways. Yeah, okay, yeah, I could see that. I could see, uh, see, uh, her type of character getting a little bit more offended at that, uh, at that, and yeah, like, pissed like, off, not throw fucking... some balls, yeah. Defend defend their child through all of this. <laughs> Yeah, and his right to be uh, be there. <laughs> at least he finally realized, you know, that oh, he has a son and he should protect him. But at the end, when when she's like, uh, she's you know, almost passed out, and she's like, I don't want to go down in the well, and 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 he's like, what about the kid? You know, he, he, he then he finally says it, you know, and she finally gets her to go down into the well so, so he could finish, uh, you know, the, with the water. One thing I do got to say, uh, though, about uh, 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 this fil uh, film is uh, sometimes in Japanese films, uh, I have a hard time of distincting emotions. And I actually saw uh, in Yuji definitely some melancholy about uh, his powers that he has. Like, it's one of those... One of those th uh, 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 things that one of those uh, th uh, th uh, things oh, that I don't sorry. think that that's okay. You're, you're having some uh, technical difficulties today, uh, <laughs> but one of those things that even if you or yeah. me or Tammy ha had powers th uh, that maybe we wouldn't understand how to control them or how to use them. And 
I don't know why he call them, why they call them powered just ESP. Everybody has uh, ESP, whether you tap into it or not. <laughs> yeah, maybe Sadako is screwing around. I mean, I, I, I've had, I, I personally have had clairvoyance, clairaudience, um, precognition, dreamscaping. So, you know. Uh, 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 really Tam, 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 Tammy, have you ever had moments where uh, you predicted something would happen and it has happened? Yeah, I know you're going to call on me right now. <laughs> uh, I, I'm sorry, Tammy, what did you say? I didn't understand. I said I know David oh. was going to call on me right now. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> well, have you had uh, what? Tell us if there have been moments that maybe you uh, you have predicted something would happen and it and it did. I don't know. I'm... The only one that I totally remember, and I always probably will, is when my great grandma died. Before my grandmother picked out what she was going to bury her in. I had a dream as to what it was going to be. And then when I went with my grandmother to look at, look for what she was going to pick out, one of the dresses he, she picked out was the one that I had dreamed of. Whoa. Okay. So. Well, I think we've all had... Mo uh, moments of predicting so uh, something in the future and it comes true and, and we're, oh, yeah, we're like a little bit more what the fuck that. when that happens <laughs> there was yeah. a little bit more to that I called my great grandma Nana and I didn't know that they were going to get I didn't nobody said anything that they were going to get a little thing of flowers that said Nana on it and it was there at the funeral. Whoa. <laughs> Ooh. Reg uh, regardless, uh, going back to the film, um, <laughs> he, uh, this, well, I call it powers be uh, be uh, because some people have more of it than most. Or at least so, in this uh, I'm a superhero because I, 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 I have like four out of five. I have like five of them, so <laughs> I have poppers. I would think of you more as like the uh, Bruce Willis unbreakable dude. <laughs> Why is that? Because uh, that's who you, who you kind of remind me of. <laughs> okay, then. A little bit. Except I know about him and <laughs> I don't think I'm but, a superhero, but yeah. <laughs> In any I, case. Um, uh, going back to this uh, uh, well thing. So after they find the, uh, well, actually um, it's Reiko who goes down into the well and uh, she eventually entangles herself with the hair of uh, that's supposedly Sadako um, yes. and she uh, she brings up the 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 skeleton of the body of Sadako and that's when we get all the cops are at at, at uh, the place now and uh, <laughs> They think that, you know, uh, oh, and the marks on her hands are gone, or our uh, wrists are gone, so they think they're in the Ooh. clear. Oh yeah. Ooh. But um. apparently, there is something that uh, they have not done. Uh, that. Her husband and her child have not done, and she. Well, 
he gets back to his uh, his place, Yugi, and that's when we get the famous mo uh, moment of Sadaku coming out of the television. Oh yeah. <laughs> what did y'all think about that particular part? Ooh. Well, he definitely is the most uh, iconic scene of the movie. Now, to me, it was maybe a little predictable since I had seen the American version first. And maybe the sad thing is that I heard about it before I even uh, so before I saw even the American version. So even then, I uh, knew that was coming. <laughs> But ah, uh, so you, you heard many spoilers before, <laughs> um, yeah, unfortunately. Uh, <coughs> but, um, <coughs> what did you think about uh, that, uh, that whole um segment, Kroll, uh, where, where he got back to his place? And um, I thought it was about time. <laughs> yeah, I mean that, that's the that's the scene you remember most when you think of this movie, um, the the ring movies, at least of the American version, is you you think of that. So I, I was I was waiting for for that. I mean, uh, I guess I can see why they they did it at the end to the, like kind of be a little more climactic, but uh, that just leads to you know why is that the whole movie is kind of slow. In, in 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 ways is because you know they, they take a lot of time to uh build up to any kind of reveal at all and uh you know even even with the reveal they weren't that it, would, it wasn't that creepy you know i mean that that part was creepy though how i don't know the, the tv and stuff but i just kept thinking like he's slowly backing up and stuff and it's not like the girl's going all that fast you know like if it was me I'm just screaming right out the door. <laughs> you know? uh, like, what the fuck? Like, what the hell? Actually, why the hell do people, like, back up slowly and just like, no, no, no. Like, get the fuck out of there. Like, uh, I'll run this uh, bitch. <laughs> you know? I mean, uh, she probably got him anyways eventually, but, you know. Actually... <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, much better explained in the novel. Uh, now, uh, spoiler alert: uh, if you haven't read the novel and if you uh, and if you want to read it at some point, you may want to stop watching this discussion now because I'm going to uh, reveal a big spoiler of the novel. Uh, uh, unless any of the three of you want to read it at some point, then I won't. <laughs> so, it doesn't matter. You you can tell us what uh, what happened if, I'm not if you remember. To read it. Book. Oh, uh, okay. So in the novel, we actually do not have the moment of Sadako coming out of TV. That uh, that actually originates from this movie by Hideo Nakata. It's not in Ringu Kanzen, but either. In that one, something different happens at the end. Uh, what happens in the novel, well, okay, I don't remember all the details of it, but uh, I remember uh, Ryuji was in severe pain when his time to die came. And uh, it, it wasn't really something that you could escape. Like I said, it's been a while since I read it, so I don't remember all the details of it. It, but uh, from what I remember, he suffered extreme pain, and maybe, uh, maybe something happened to his mind as well. But uh, at the very end, what killed him was when he saw his reflection in the mirror, which looked uh, uh, heavily distorted. I'm trying to find it uh, in the manga now. Uh, in this manga that was directly from the novel, I can find it and show it to you. So you will see what he saw in the novel that killed him. But basically it was an illusion of his own face, like 
he looked much older and terribly distorted. And that when he saw that, he died. What it looks like in the manga. The, uh, the, this image here. So almost like almost like he was a see it's almost like uh, like he was seen like uh, a, a, a version of uh, Dorian Gray. <laughs> Interesting thought. I didn't think of it that way. But uh, yeah, uh, one interesting thing about that is the in the novel uh, there is a Sadako as a character, but she is not really the main antagonist of the story. What actually kills people in that version is a virus uh, that uh, enters your body when you watch the tape. And uh, uh, the origin of that virus was connected to Sadako. Now, that's a long story. I partially remember it, probably not all the details of it, but okay, I shouldn't uh, ramble too much about that now. But yeah, the point is, in the novel, uh, the way, to put it that way, villain is the virus. And in the movie, it's not so easy to portray a virus as a main antagonist because a virus is not something visible. You need, uh, you need a villain you can actually see on screen. So they changed the story a bit and made uh, Sadako the main villain. And, in uh, this version, in Hideo Nakata's movie, they introduced this scene of her coming out of TV and her being the one who kills people who saw the tape. Well, yeah, and all, all they have to do is just see them, and they and they just contort uh, 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 to, uh, to how uh, how she is reflected. Uh, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, yeah, like uh, in this movie, they see they see her eye, which looks uh, nasty, as we remember, and that's what apparently kills them. Although, which, if I can be honest, yes, I wonder if there isn't a kind of a, a connection with her and Medusa a little bit, um, oh. uh, in Greek mythology, because uh, she could. Uh, could uh, if you looked into her uh, uh, into Medusa's eyes, you'd turn to stone, which in a in, in a sense is a death. So when he saw her, he turned to stone. It was the snakes that did it. Yeah, I didn't think of it that way at all. Very interesting. <laughs> oh, it's just a thought. Um, uh, 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 just because, uh, because Medusa ha had the power to, like, you know, kill people, in a sense. Uh, yeah, yeah, like she petrifies them if they look her in the eyes. I think they looked at but her hair. <laughs> they looked in her eyes, and her eyes uh, 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 glowed. And it was, uh, and yes, the snakes were part of it, but uh, but it was in, in essence if you looked in her eyes. It was the snakes. It was not the snakes. <laughs> it was the eyes. <laughs> you guys need to reread it again. You need to rewatch it again. One. There's even a commercial on TV with a girl playing Medusa as she goes and gets sunglasses so that she yeah, doesn't look in people's eyes. Yeah, the commercials are always 100% right. Okay. Good argument. <laughs> I feel like uh, I feel like Danny DeVito in this moment. I'm right, you're wrong, and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I'm right, you're wrong, nothing you can do about it. <laughs> but in any <laughs> case, uh, moving on. Uh, so he ultimately uh, uh, dies, and uh, uh, and I guess. Uh, Reiku realizes something happens because she ends up going over to his re residence, even though his body has already been claimed. And uh, they call she her runs and in. Tell her. So I'm call sorry, her. what did you 
The police uh, called her. Yeah. The police he called her, her but, uh, but they made her. sure his body was already gone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love uh, how she said she's his wife. She, she skipped the X part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, they yeah. do that a lot in, in, in movies, like uh, when people, when someone's hurt or, or something, like, I'm the wife or I'm the husband, you know, even though they're technically X, you know, they, they, they don't let on that part, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> well, in any case, she gets the, uh, there and then she goes and talks to the student and she uh, uh, the way she describes the way his bo body was is a little creepy. You know, uh, I think she it describes it a little contorted like and yeah. that's what when she uh, when, uh, that's when Reiku went back home and that's what uh, uh, was she was trying to in her mind figure out you know what? Uh, uh, why did she survive? Uh, wh what did she do right that uh, th that they did wrong? And that's when she, uh, uh, immediately she uh, thinks about that vision of that pointed figure under underneath that uh, sack, and she thought, "Well, wait a minute! It's po uh, pointing in her mind at her purse," and she uh, pulls out the uh, uh, the videotape and on it it says copy so that's when she uh, she puts two and two together ding 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 I've got to <laughs> copy this shit so she calls everybody that she can to make as many copies as possible including she the didn't call anybody she called yeah. her. She, only, she only called her father and said can, uh, you, yeah. do me a, can you do me a favor Basically, she wants her father to, to watch it, you know, watch her son to show her father the movie, so it passes the 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 curse on to him, and then he has to well, pass the curse on to somebody else. Therefore, it never ends. Yep, kind of like uh, a chain letter of events. So, yeah, it's exactly a chain letter. Yeah, actually, that that part was maybe. Uh, a little bit more humorous in the novel, maybe not intentionally, but that was how uh, it felt to me. In the novel, uh, Kazuyuki Asakawa, uh, he had he had to save his wife and his child, so uh, two persons, not only one, and uh, he had uh, he had his uh, his wife's parents watch the tape, but not. Uh, not his own parents, but his wife's parents. <laughs> so uh, it almost uh, it, it almost sounded as if he uh, wanted to get rid of his in laws. <laughs> Which, if the curse was uh, uh, really more what what is it detailed, uh, then uh, uh, she would actually have to have her child Yoichi um, make a copy of the tape. To have it watched by uh, by someone else, but she. Well, I think that was the plan. That's, that's what that's what they do in the American version. Uh... Yep. But uh, in any case, uh, she uh, uh, basically ends the movie uh, on a road trip obviously to make sure that there are m many copies available so uh, so that ev uh, 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 she can save as many people as she can from this curse <laughs> or <laughs> at least save her family from the curse and, and uh, enough to pass it along <laughs> uh, yeah so what do y'all think about that ending there? Uh, Tammy, what did you think about how it ended? I didn't think that she was going to make as many copies as she could. I thought that she was going to go prove that that's why she was, you know, that, that, that was the difference is that she had made a copy. Exactly. Uh, made it and showed made it and showed it to someone else. Both things had to be done from what I understood. 
I understood that mm-hmm. uh, that she was just gonna keep passing the tape to as many people as possible because that's what she was talking about at the end. I don't know uh, who she was talking to about that, but uh, it's I like you've seen a different movie than us. <laughs> I think that she heard while she was in the car after the phone call to her father. I think just uh, other people who were uh, uh, who were hearing the story and watching the tape and so on. It was. It, yeah, I think was you were just hearing her thoughts. So you know, she wasn't talking to anybody. Correct. Uh, I, and her thoughts were, were that she was going to make sure that the tape was available to uh, uh, to as many people as possible. Or, uh, 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 or make a copy to as many people as possible and make sure that it gets passed along. Because then people don't make the same mistake. So, because the tape is already out there, it's already a rumor... It was pa- uh, pa- passed along the students. You don't know how many people already saw it, you know. Well, uh, I actually think that scene uh, shows a very interesting moral dilemma. Like, there were, as far as I know, at that point, there were only two tapes the original and the one she made for Ryuji. Uh, they were both in her possession. So, she had a choice. Uh, she could have. Uh, she could have destroyed the tapes, and uh, she would have sacrificed her family. But uh, she would have. Uh, she would have prevented the curse from s- spreading further and putting more people in danger. But instead of that, she chose to save her own family, in spite of what that might do to some other people in the future. And I think it's an interesting moral dilemma because uh, while uh, technically it may seem like she made a morally wrong decision, but at the end... Fuck all that, I would uh, save my family too. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say. It may have been wrong, but but who would... (laughs) Who would have the strength to make a, a different decision in that situation? Zena. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, my, my thoughts on that final scene is, is I kind of, I kind of laughed a little bit when she's like, "Dad, I want you to do a favor. It's for, for, the kid, the kid." And I'm just like, at first I didn't realize what she was asking, and then like you know, says so she's on the way, then I realized, oh. Now she she basically, you know, putting the curse on her father to get it off her son, but then of course she's going to plan on having her father show somebody else to get it off of him and so on and so forth. So, yeah, I, it was it was, it was kind of interesting. I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah, well, when she passed it on to her father, she got that gave her a few more days to find someone else. Yep, and make sure that they know to uh, to copy it and pass it along, so uh, so that the uh, the curse can uh, continue, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah. But uh, that being said, what did we think about the production, Crow? What did you think about the production so far? I mean, like I said before, I mean, you know, it, it was it was okay, but you know, they they could have they could have showed a little bit more earlier, and 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 you know, but like I said, the speed was a little slow. I mean, cut the bucket scene, add a few m- uh, more imagery of the. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, have a little more scenes which is coming out of the TV or something, or maybe something a little different. I don't know. Um, you know. It's just, uh, <laughs> and plus, I, we never mentioned um, some of the kids that said the rumor was that you just watch TV late at night and she shows up. Um, where you know, like that, they're saying, not even saying, you know, videotape, like she just shows up, and of course, that is not the case. It's the videotape, on uh, it's, it's the curse. Um, I think it, it's, I think it's a rumor is uh, kind of like uh, Bloody Mary. Uh, if you know about that, you know, standing in the mirror and saying Bloody Mary at midnight three times, she appears. <laughs> um, so, 
that's just uh, I don't know. the the production was okay, but you know, it could have been done. It could have been better. You know, I mean, for what they were going for, I guess they they you know the production was was decent. You know, uh, it's not really a period piece or anything, so you didn't really have any of that feeling. Um, just you know, you definitely tell it was in Japan and. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, I mean the 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 ocean looked pretty, you know, disturbing. Like there's a typhoon and stuff. So, you know, it looked the okay. way it was supposed uh, to look. What about you, Tammy? Uh, what did you think about the production value of this uh, film? I thought it was okay. You know, there wasn't like a whole lot of like special effects or anything like that. You know, it was pretty much what you see is what you get type of thing, and. You know, it would have been nice if there was a little bit more about it or, you know, before before the ending, you know, when she comes out of the well, you know, a little, 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 little hints here and there, a little bit more of what was actually going on that in that sense. But other than that, I thought it was fine. Okay. Uh, what about you, Boris? Uh, what did you think about the production overall? I also thought it was fine, although maybe the American version had a bit more vivid imagery. Uh, but yeah, it was still good. The way they showed the Sadako coming out of the screen was very good, although one issue I have seen is that when you see her crawling, uh, and uh, when you see, I don't know the English word for it, but when you see her do this with her fingers, uh, it, you can actually see that she is wearing rubber gloves. If you look, if you look closely at her fingers, I, I you missed, can see. I missed that. I, I couldn't tell the gloves. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't tell the first time either, but I saw the movie probably more than 10 times back in 2012 and 2013. So yeah, I eventually noticed that. You can see these rubber-like folds on her fingers. Uh, so yeah, that's... Uh, that's one thing I noticed, but aside from that, it was... Uh, pretty good, although, yeah, maybe uh, the corpses, when you see them uh, looking all, uh, like, in shock and so on, uh, they don't really look as distorted as they do in the American version. Like, when <laughs> someone in this movie said, I've never seen a corpse like that before, I was like, man, you should watch the American version. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> and, and, yeah, yeah, I thought that when you said that too. I'm like, so oh, you were, so you were, so you were comparing a lot when you uh, when you went went and watched this the first time, weren't you? Well, that was kind of inevitable, uh, and the movies are so similar. And I I saw the Japanese version not too long after the American version, so uh, the I one thing you got. To the one thing you got to remember, remember is that th uh, this film was first. Uh, uh, so I guess you could say uh, Americans have a blueprint mm. on certain films and how uh, how they could do things. Mm. Now let's see how we can mm. do it differently and with a, bit, a better budget. <laughs> yeah, they... Uh... Yeah, they did. Uh, they did take a lot from this movie, but also from. Uh, they also took a few things from uh, South Korea the remake, which is not very well known, but it exists. It's called well in Korea. I think it's also called the ring or ling or however they pronounce it. But internationally, it's known as uh, the ring virus. Uh, so. If you ever want to look that one up, uh, uh, it may be interesting to see. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I could, I, I could eventually see seeing that one eventually down the road. But uh, yeah, it, that it, one is. Uh, 
As far as production go, uh, goes for this film, I thought, I thought that, like, Crow mentioned something earlier to, uh, 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 that uh, that I think that, uh, that brings a creep element to this film. Uh, when they took uh, 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 the photo of um, Reiku or Reiko, and I... it, it, it it messed up when it came out. Uh, you know, her face was distorted. That brought an yeah. element of creep, creep factor to uh, the film. Oh, yeah, there is that loud sound they play in such scenes. Oh, uh, by the way, that reminds me. Earlier, when I was into the Ring franchise, as I said, 2012 and 2013, there was a time when I was making my own replicas of some items from the Ring movies, both uh, Japanese and from the Korean version too. But yeah, for example, I made the replica of that photo of Reiko. You can see right here. Uh, okay. And uh, yeah, I have a few more things here. If you guys want to see them, maybe. Uh, sure, why not? Do, uh, we're we're okay. towards the end here. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I made replicas of some of the photos of Tomoko and her friends that. Uh, uh, Reiko uh, got developed after finding uh, probably the camera roll in Tomoko's room or something like that. I couldn't make replicas of photos, but there were five photos that I could make uh, from look what... At uh, uh, look at this obsessional detail. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> It, yeah, I was uh, I was a huge nerd for this franchise. Oh, that's kind of uh, cool. Thank you. Yeah, two more photos of of those. That... Now, are these actual photos or just ones that you printed? Oh, I uh, I took a screenshot from the movie and uh, uh, altered them in Photoshop to make them. Uh, to make them uh, uh, suitable for processing as real photos. And I also have this binder where I put uh, a bunch of ring stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> here I have, <laughs> if, yeah, you like it. I, uh, I made this sticker, uh, I had it printed at a coffee shop and uh, stuck it on this binder. Uh, <laughs> Nerd. And, <laughs> Nerd. <indeed. laughs> so here I have a replica of one of those newspapers articles that appeared in the movie. I'm not sure which one it is anymore since it's in Japanese. But yeah, that, uh, then what else I have here? Oh, yeah, the replicas of those uh, uh, of those uh, uh, letters from uh, Shizuko's uh, clairvoyance scene uh, okay. when they were comparing them how she uh, got it all correctly I have uh, uh, I made all the five of these but okay it's all just uh, these Japanese characters uh, so Maybe I, maybe you're not interested in seeing each and every one of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's quite quite a lot. <laughs> oh, okay, still, these are some. Still, it's cool how, how much detail that you put into co uh, collecting anything dealing with it, no matter oh. what. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, uh, I I was a huge fan of that franchise, actually. Exploring that franchise was what led me to discovering uh, John Bowker's movie, The Seekers, which is also a 
a paranormal video tape, although a different one. And as we know, that movie was what made me fond of independent horror movies, which was what uh, 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 what originally led me to making contact to you, Dave. Uh, which is why I said at the beginning of the discussion that if it wasn't for the Ring franchise, I probably wouldn't have been among you guys nowadays. <laughs> so. <laughs> Well, I'm glad it t uh, 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 took you making a copy of The Ring to uh, uh, come on the show. So, uh, in, in any case, uh, let's go into, well, did we want to talk about music here for a moment? Did anyone notice any of the music? Well, Not from really. what I from what I remember, there isn't much music except for the sound effects, and there is a a song in the ending credits that's uh, probably the only one we could mention. It sounds kind of cool, but it's, it's in Japanese. I couldn't really understand what uh, they sing about. Well, the music was supposedly done by Kenji Kawai. Uh, I, I guess that's what his name is, and he is a he's a composer for a lot of films. It looks like, uh, but uh, but um, he was a composer behind the IP Man series uh, of films. Oh, he was a, a composer behind When They Cry, which was a animated series that I. Um, uh, that I watched, which Ooh. is not surprising, because I was just thinking about uh, about that series when you were mentioning that a virus was. Uh, 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 yes, uh, yes, the virus is uh, a huge plot point in the novels. Uh, and, uh, I'm just looking to uh, 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 looking at all the things that he's composed. He's composed a lot. Um, he composed music behind uh, behind Samurai from 2002, Bloody Mallory from 2002, Dark Water, which is an, uh, another good um, J horror film. Oh yeah, and uh, Dark Water was also based on a story written by Koji Suzuki, who wrote uh, Reed. Uh, yeah, he's he's behind a lot of. Uh, oh, he's uh, behind behind the mu music behind the original Ghost in the Shell. So, uh, so he's he's had a lot of uh, composing behind a lot of uh, Japanese anime. Oh yeah, by the way, I also have this uh, soundtrack of uh, the Spanish Green, this one, and the uh, Spiral, the sequel, which uh, if we ever get to that one as well, it would be interesting. <laughs> Most definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, now I think we are on to um, favorite scenes. So, Tammy, what is a favorite scene that you have from this particular film? Probably the ending when she comes out <laughs> of the well and all the TV. Well, what about you, Boris? Uh, is there a favorite scene from this particular version of the film or scenes? I think uh, my favorite scene, uh, generally it would possibly also be the final scene, yeah, when Sadako comes out of TV, but uh, since I saw the American version first, uh, this one is the same pretty much as that one, so... It was predictable, so uh, something I found more compelling in this movie was the 
backstory of uh, Shizuko and Sadako, and I like the scene when uh, Ryuji and Reiko forced the confessions out of Takashi Yamamura, and when we got to see what Sadako did to that journalist, uh, and also uh, I, because that shows us uh, conversion, and I also to say anything, but uh, Ryuji pretty much forced him to say it. That was uh, kind of delightful to watch after uh, the old guy was being such an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, and, uh, and what about you? Oh, are you done? Anything more? Uh, Crawl, are you here? He was asking you if there's anything more. Uh, ah, if there's anything more. Uh, yeah, were you done? Well, uh, well, as far as favorite scenes go, maybe not, but uh, I also... Uh, I I would also like to ask what uh, uh, who everyone's favorite character is. We didn't mention that. Uh, okay. We could go about favorite scenes and favorite characters. Uh, so. All right. So favorite scene is, is the same as everyone uh, the, the coming out of the, the TV, um, as I mentioned before. Um, you know, it's just a good scene, and and it was about time they finally had it because you know I saw the American version and I was waiting for it. You know, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'd say favorite scene. As far as favorite characters, um, I don't really have one. I mean, you know, the, you know, there were okay characters, but I don't really have a favorite character. Okay, what about what about you, Tammy? Uh, was there a favorite character that you liked? No, not really. Okay. Um. As far as favorite scenes, I would have to agree, uh, agree uh, w w in line with you, Boris, that uh, that uh, the uh, the uh, scene with her coming out of the t uh, TV and coming out of the well and uh, and st uh, and stuff that that was uh, definitely cool. And I do like the flashback scenes of uh, uh, what happened. Uh, um, uh, I I do enjoy those scenes from this uh, this particular film, um, just the way that they filmed uh, the, uh, them in the incoherency that they were, uh, and how they placed them was kind of cool. I thought. Um, other than that, um, yeah, um, favorite character Sadaku. Uh, Sadaku is always <laughs> my, uh, uh, always a. Uh, 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 just whenever she show, uh, shows up, and um, for some reason, I always find uh, Yoichi a uh, very odd child in here. Uh, so right. I'm not sure uh, sure whether uh, whether I like him or I like the other kid better uh, in the Ooh. remake. Interesting. Ooh. Well, uh, actually, uh, I saw it crawl. What were you going? He was to a say? very, he uh, was a very naughty. I mean, he was a very naughty child. <laughs> uh, yes, he uh, was. Uh, uh, to, uh, to me, I mean, you, you, you don't, uh, you don't let your child, and uh, uh, to, uh, you know, watch things like that. You know. <laughs> Well, um, and it seemed like she didn't, it, it didn't show that she act, had actually left him with anyone while she was like going on these investigation trips. It seemed like he was very much on his own, uh, that no one was like babysitting him. Um, uh, except he for, yeah, but, uh, but he said that, ah, uh, uh I'm sorry, Crawl. What did you say? I said she. She said that he's used to being alone, because the the, the oh. dad actually asked, you know, 
Will he be okay by himself? And she said he's he's used to it. Uh, yeah. You see, in, in our American uh, way of thinking, you should never leave a child alone. It is uh, irresponsible, you know? Uh, and, on the age. He, and the way uh, the way he looked, it didn't seem like, you know, he was old enough to allow that to happen. I agree. You know? So... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I feel like she was very irresponsible where he was concerned. What about you, Tammy? Did you feel like she was irresponsible where you always, you always, she was concerned? I think he was way too young to be left alone, yes. Mm, yeah, I admit I wasn't thinking about it before, but now that you guys pointed it out, yeah, he did. <laughs> but... Uh, in that respect, I think we have had our discussion. So um, hopefully uh, you ladies and gentlemen that are out there listening to our discussion, just go and watch the film. Obviously, uh, uh, Lee, you're going to have a, uh, a perspective, maybe different, maybe the same. But uh, definitely let us know down in the comments what you thought about our our thoughts and uh, uh, we'll be back next week with another cool discussion. So everyone say good afternoon. Or Fast and or the Furious. <laughs> um, Have a good one. Well, we'll definitely see whether who's fast and who's furious. Uh, that's for sure. <laughs> good morning. In any case. <laughs> Have a good evening. And uh, like, share, and subscribe. Uh,